Uh, hey guys, it's the Unpro Pro here. It is 12:50 a.m. Um, I got kind of attacked by a horde of termites, so I kind of waited for them to calm down because uh, they kept landing on the bed too. So I thought I'd make a little tutorial. This is uh, a Blender 3D tutorial. This is how to make a real time with uh, ocean that's actually interactive with other objects. Instead of it just being animated and going through the object, it'll be kind of modifying itself to go around. First thing you want to do is go to this little tool thing. You select the cube, you go here, the object modifiers, you click add modifier, and you select the ocean. Now, here you want to set this to at least 10. You can adjust the choppiness, I'm going to say about 3, and the height, or the scale, we're going to increase that slightly. Maybe 1.5 looks pretty good. The, uh, the alignment, we're going to type 5, uh, so it's going to look pretty good like this. And you don't have to worry about those little cringe things, because they're going to be all smoothing out. But if you want to get rid of those, let's change this to a 2, maybe. Yeah, 2 looks really good. So now we're going to add a cube by pressing space. We're going to go add cube. And it's just going to sit there. Now, right-click on the uh, ocean. And what you want to do is... Well, we're not going to give it a material right now. We're going to go over here to the physics tab. You can hold the middle mouse button and scroll to uh, move this thing. Okay, so... And you want to select dynamic paint. Uh, this is the Blender 2.66A. And um, you want to go to canvas, you got to add canvas. Now you select waves. Now, if you just play this, nothing's going to happen. However, if you select this, and you uh, select the cube that we made, and we select dynamic paint, we select brush, go to add brush, make sure it's on mesh volume. If you go back to the first frame and you click play, you can see that you can kind of realistically create incredibly fast waves. To turn the wave speed down, you go, uh, you right click here, we're on the physics tab, and we're on the dynamic paint thing, and you do the speed, you want to turn it down. Um, if you have more than 250 frames, okay, make sure this is start frame is one, or uh, whenever you want the waves to actually start interacting, and uh, make sure this is set to uh, wherever you want it to end at. Make sure you increase this if you've also increased this if you need to, otherwise, yeah. So again, now let's see how this goes. On. Let's uh, go back, select this cube, play it. I think that's a lot more realistic. Now these waves, uh, hold, by the way, if you want to replace, or if you want to set it back to the original position, hold Alt and press G. Uh, these waves um, are going to be animated in a second. So, Go back, to, uh, go back to this, or go to this little square. It's the object. When you're, uh, so make sure you've selected the, uh, the waves. Okay. Now what you want to do is go to the first frame by clicking this right here. I apologize if you can't see it, but it's this right here. Um, Camtasia seems to have a bug where it doesn't show the mouse. But um, now what you want to do, or no, I was at the wrong one. You want to click the object modifiers tab again, the toolbox, and. Um, we're gonna go to, we're gonna we're gonna go here where it says time, right here that I've selected. Uh, make it one at the start and press I on the keyboard while hovering over it with your mouse. Make sure your mouse, if you can't see my mouse, make sure that your mouse is hovering over the um, thing. Now go to the last frame and make it about twelve and press I again. Make sure you're hovering over it. If you can't see the mouse again, I'm sorry. Now, uh, go down here at the bottom left. You'll see this thing right, here, uh, right next to view here. Um, it says graph editor. You click it, and it says graph editor. Go here, press T, select linear, and go back to 3D view. Now, press play. And as you can see, the uh, well, we obviously don't want it like super spiky like that, right? But as you can see, the waves are interacting like they normally would. But um, in order to fix the spikiness, all we have to do is go back to the physics tab over here, and we're gonna um, we're gonna do damping. We're gonna increase that. It's, right now it's 0.4. Let's do a 0.2. And uh, yeah, that makes it look a lot better. Okay, as you can see, you can drag it around, and it and it's real time ocean physics. Now, if you want a good water material without using textures, uh, you could actually do this. You can. I'm gonna go into the camera view, 
and I'm actually going to uh, okay first thing I'm going to do is go over here uh, you can see the, pretty much the location um, and I'm going to go to texture mode then I'm going to click this little plus that's right at the top right uh, right underneath this little draggable arrow thing and that's going to that's going to open this up we're going to go to display we're going to select display down here and you're going to go shading GLSL it is going to be closed automatically so make sure it's open now we're just going to drag the edge back now we're going to give this uh, we're going to right click the light over here this little thing and you're going to select hemi now I'm going to reset the position by holding Alt R and I'm going to press uh, R and then I'm going to press X and then I'm going to kind of point it to where it's a little shaded but it still gives off a good light. Now um, you can see the angle of the light there and it just makes it look so cool. Like a lot darker but it's not too dark. Anyway so make sure you right clicked on the water and you're going to do material and you're going to select right here the color you're going to make it kind of blue. Make it actually like a uh, darker kind of blue. Like maybe right there. We're going to do ramp. Uh, we're going to select add. Over here, make sure that that's fine. Um, over here though, where it says white, we're going to change that to a different shade of blue. Slightly. Like maybe there. And the gray right here, we're going to change that to a darker blue. Like so. Now, if you take a picture of this by going to render and or pressing F12, you'll see that it's got kind of a funky looking little water texture. Um, on the camera, I am going to move it back some by pressing, right clicking it and pressing G. And uh, I'm going to rotate it a little bit here. What I did here was I pressed R and I pressed Z, and that allows me to rotate it in that angle. Now, um, I'm going to rotate this a little bit too, just so we can kind of get a good view of what's going on. You can see it interacts, but now we want the water to actually reflect what's going on. So what you do what you do over here is you go down to transparency, ray trace, alpha, maybe make it a point five eight four, IOR one point one five. And forensal, we're gonna make this a a five. Let's just make it a no, let's make it a two. Make the forensal two. Go down to mirror, select mirror go to reflect all the way select blue uh, some kind of random shade of blue or um and then forensal make that a three and uh, i'm gonna save this as a blend file and there you go you have a pretty nice reflectant water um, however you obviously don't want it to look so like glared what you do there is where on specular you can also select some kind of uh, shade of blue. I'm going to select a very cane kind of blue. I'm going to go to intensity 1. I'm going to hardness and making it 511, which is the highest it can go. Again, I'm, whoa, whoa, what? Again, I'm going to save it. What? Oh, it didn't save last time. Okay, I'll just save it to pictures. Um, I'm going to render. And as you can see, it just makes it look a little bit different. There's something flying on me. All right, um, obviously you can't see the, the reflective in real time, but um, yeah, so there's your ocean, and I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's all rendered, but say you were just playing around, you wanted to drag it like, I don't know, hold on, um, what we're going to do is we're going to animate it and make it kind of fly around. And actually, we're going to change the waves a little bit, make them look a little different. Make the alignment one. Oh my gosh, that looks so much better. Uh, Water-wise, now we're gonna—I'm gonna turn the scale back down a little bit, and it just makes it look a little more ripply. I'm not talking about ripplies, believe it or not. Uh, by the way, you can go to playback and go to frame dropping, and what that'll do is it'll display it in real time uh, by using frame skipping and it won't just slow down. You'll be able to see how the waves look in real time. Let's get out of this mode so you can see it up close. So yeah, if you're making like a little blender scene with water, I think this is definitely the best way of doing it. So I'm now going to show you how to animate this little cube and make it, well, kind of wave through the water. 
Let's go back to the first frame, press I. Oops, we're going to go location. Now it just goes somewhere else, like randomly, and uh, press G and X, for example, and press I after you moved it. As you can see, it's going to move through the water. I'm going to drag the water up just a little bit. So it actually looks like it's moving through the water. As you can see, it's kind of at the edge of the screen there. So now while selecting the cube, I'm going to go a little bit farther. I'm going to go GX, GY, maybe move it here, and then press I and select location. I'm going to save that, and we're going to see how this looks. That looks really good. Now you want to give the water a smoothing, and how you do that is you right click the water, click the uh, little wrench thing, go to add modify, and you're going to go to, where is it, where is it, smooth, smooth, no, that was terrible, uh, and you just go to wherever scene you think like looks a little bit spiky, like that for example, I'm going to zoom into that, and you can just drag this up, and it should start smoothing it out. However, the bad news is, it makes the waves kind of look a little different as well. To fix this, um, however it will be a lot slower, you can simply change the resolution up by one more, and this makes everything look a lot better, might I add. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Um, oh yeah, that's so much better. I'm going to change the scale up a little bit. So yeah, there you go. You have interactive, realistic ocean water. Perfect for, um, just, it's just perfect, you know, for stuff like, well, of course, you know, in the actual blender, you know, whatever you're rendering, you're going to obviously have textures. Uh, I would show you that, but I don't really have any legal rights to actually use textures, so I don't really want to get, like, yelled at by anybody. So I just did this textureless. Now I'm actually going to un okay. What I'm going to do before I before, uh, before the final render, I'm going to unselect the frame dropping, and you'll see like a little purple line that goes underneath the uh, thing. That's like it basically pre-processing what's going on, and uh, next time you play it through, it should be a lot smoother. So we're just going to let it do its thing. And it's going to get all the way to here, and then we're going to render it out and I'm going to show you how it looks in the final render. Well, you've probably already seen it at the beginning, but well, here it is again. Alright. Now it's it's done, but it obviously did not save what it did. So, I'm going to stop this recording and I will show you guys the final render.